Hello everyone. What you see in front of me right now is part of the 3.0 update now available for the copper wiring data pack. If you didn't see the previous video, this is wire insulation, which allows you to color code wires as well as prevent them from dealing damage on contact or powering nearby redstone. So let me show you how these currently work. And this is subject to change. I just wanted to make a simple version of this that works. And that way you guys can play around with it as you see fit. And then I can improve it as I go and make the more refined version. So right now, all you have to do is drop a concrete onto a copper wire and it will create this wire insulation. And this will connect to nearby blocks if you have any present, whether that's another wire or a full block or anything like that. And like I said, this prevents damage directly from contact unless it's still from the front and there's an exposed end like this, then you can take damage when this wire is powered. And if you ever wanna get rid of this and get the concrete back, you just have to break the block and the concrete item will drop and you can pick it back up and use it again. Now the plan is to make this a right click detection. I've said that before, I just haven't gotten to it yet, but in the next update, I'll clean it up. Again, for now, this is just a sort of unrefined version, just so you can play around with it and let me know what you think. And if there are any problems with this feature, other than the whole drop mechanic thing and breaking the block, then I can fix those issues while also refining this in the next update. But anyways, to get to an intermediate feature of this pack, uh, redstone dust is now recognized by copper bulbs to transmit power. And so that way you can use comparators with the redstone dust. And so say we've got a hopper full of hoppers that sends a signal strength of 15, as you can see by the F3 menu, and then it transmits power. Now, another thing is that I fixed the grate. I fixed the capacitor so it works like you would expect it to. The reason why it was really weird last update was because number one, I didn't quite understand how capacitors actually worked in the real world. And number two, I wanted to give it some specific behavior in regards to uh, timing things and using it in a mechanism, but I integrated that in a different way. So this works as you'd expect it to. Based on the number of inputs, it'll fill up at a certain speed. And based on the number of outputs, that will be changed as well so since there's the same number it won't fill up if there's more it will drain and you know you get the picture it's pretty simple the difference is i allowed a lever to do interesting things if it is not fully charged and there are inputs charging it then a false lever will not let output out no matter how many outputs you have if you turn it true then output will go out and so it'll charge and not have to worry about this however once it's completely full then outputs will go through regardless of the lever and the other thing is that if it doesn't have any inputs, then it will just power and drain by itself regardless of the lever. Uh, I might change that to where it doesn't when the lever is set to false. The reason why I have this is so that let's say you had uh, this charging right here, then it can actually detect when it's full and you can use that for timing mechanisms because when this fully charges and the outputs go through, then you can actually route that back to the input and turn it off. So you can have sort of a sequential circuit or whatever. And yeah, so that's why the lever does that. I'm still tweaking the behavior. It's not perfect, but I figured this allows you to have some flexibility with this block. But if you don't want it, you can just break that and it works just fine. And then on the subject of these levers, they also work on these other blocks. So if I were to place one here and it's set to false and I turn this, power will not go through. And if you flick it on, then power will go through just fine. And so this works the same way with any of the blocks. If you use the chisel block, then no power will go through, not just in the direction that you place the lever. And this will work on any side of the lever at any orientation. As long as there's any lever that's set to false, it will not send power through. Now, another thing with these wires and why they are in a sequence like this is because I changed the system in which it powers and unpowers wires, which was necessary due to how the concrete works. So you may not be able to see it, but this is technically not powered. And if it was, then it would just power nearby blocks, but it is detected as being powered by the system. But anyways, the reason why I've got this here is because of that new system, I can actually do something really interesting. So the point's been brought up that although this quicker wire system is much better for actually powering things, for aesthetics, the slower wire is kind of better. And so you can actually use either one. All you have to do is do function, copper wire toggle, wire speed, which is at the very top. And when you press enter, it will tell you it returns a one or a zero. And if it's a one, then it's the slow wires. And then if you do it again, it'll be a zero. So it'll work like normal. It'll just uh, be the quicker version that you're used to. And by default, if you don't change anything, it'll be set to the quicker version. So you don't have to worry about them being slow. Now, similar to the whole insulation thing, I'm thinking of using a certain item or a certain set of items to allow these to be slowed down individually, since that wouldn't be hard to put in. So that's just an idea. I'm probably going to go with it, but it will be available in the next update. Something that's coming this update, though, on the flip side, is copper wiring oxidation. Each one of these blocks has a slightly different purpose, and you can use those to create additional functionality within this data pack. 
Uh, I'm not for sure on all the functions of these different oxidation stages of the blocks. So if you don't like the ideas you see, just let me know what you think is better and I'll definitely consider it because this is sort of just a rough draft of this thing. So let's start with the copper bulbs. Now the normal copper bulb is the same. As long as it's powered, it will send power through. However, the exposed copper bulb will only send power through if it's powered and lit up. And the weathered copper bulb is the exact opposite. It'll only send power when it is not lit and powered. And the fully oxidized copper bulb, this one's a bit of a misnomer. It actually just doesn't work at all. So if you don't take care of your copper, eventually your stuff will break down. Now, as far as this cut copper goes, uh, it and the regular copper have the same sort of uh, oxidation properties and that is that depending on the stages of oxidation it will require more and more inputs to equal outputs in this example here the cut copper is exposed and so it'll actually need two inputs in order to send an output through uh, when it is weathered it will require three to one and when it's completely oxidized it'll require four to one so this can potentially make more compact and gates as far as the chiseled copper though this actually delays the powered signal going through by one tick at default with the regular, uh, two with exposed, three with weathered, and four with fully oxidized. And I'll show that off when I also show off what the copper grates do, which is that the maximum charge level has been decreased for each level. Uh, by default, it'll take 60 seconds to fill with the regular one. With exposed, it's 45. With weathered, it's 30. And with fully oxidized, it's 15 seconds. So I've slowed down a tick speed to 10. And if I just fill the areas by the copper bulbs with the redstone blocks, you can see that although they are still pretty quick, there is a bit of delay. I might increase this delay so it's a little more obvious, but this allows you to get exact tick precision. And if I also go over here, you can see that the top copper grate is filling a lot faster than the one before it, which is filling a lot faster than the one before that. And the bottom one is still pretty low. So with that, you can get exact control as far as the timing goes. And you can just use multiple sequences of these in sort of an array to make a big battery. And you can use that with the combination of the levers to have custom timing in your circuit, which I think is pretty interesting. Now, if any of this behavior you think should be tweaked, do let me know what you think it should be tweaked to, because this is still kind of open-ended. I just threw these in here as sort of an idea. But anyways, that's what I've got for you in the 3.0 update, which is now live. So if you like this update, go ahead and leave a like and let me know in the comments. If you want to follow this project, feel free to subscribe and share this with your friends and give it a try. Anyways, I'll see you all in the next video.